Hi, this is Martin Lewis. Greetings from the Time Vaults. Take a trip down memory lane as we bring you your big day and year exclusively from the TV archive. You share your day with a great Russian writer, Fyodor Dostoevsky, famous for his defining works Crime and Punishment and the brothers Karamazov. He was born in Moscow on November the 11th, 1821, and became renowned for his novels about human psychology in the troubled political, social, and spiritual times of 19th century Russia. Leonardo DiCaprio has been hailed as one of the greatest Hollywood actors of the 21st century. He was born on November the 11th, 1974, in Los Angeles. He got his Christian name because his pregnant mother was looking at a Leonardo da Vinci painting in a museum in Italy when he first kicked. He won his first Best Actor Oscar as the ravaged fur-hunting hero frontiersman in the 2015 movie The Revenant. General George S. Patton was a real hero. The Second World War military commander who helped defeat Germany was born George Smith Patton Jr. on November the 11th, 1885, in California. Patton became famous for his leadership of America's Third Army in France and Germany following the invasion of Normandy in June 1944. He was a colorful, hard-driving officer who often fell out with his fellow generals and peers. November the 11th is, of course, Armistice Day in Britain and many other countries, when we remember men like General Patton. It commemorates the ceasefire peace agreement signed between the Allies and Germany at Compiègne in France on November the 11th, 1918, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. In 2014, on November the 11th, in the moat of the Tower of London, a sea of ceramic poppies captured the imagination of Britain and the world. 888,246 flowers for the fallen. One for each of the British or colonial service personnel killed in the First World War. In 1977, the Queen was celebrating 25 years on the throne, a silver jubilee. She also became a grandmother for the first time when Princess Anne gave birth to a son. He was handed to the princess who, ignoring normal advice, sat with her son in the front seat of the car. And off the couple went to Buckingham Palace for lunch. James Callaghan was Britain's prime minister. Jimmy Carter had become the 39th president of the United States. You assumed, Mr. Prime Minister, such a strong position in the European community. You now the leader of that community. In Moscow, Leonid Brezhnev was now leader of the Soviet Union. And in Beijing, Hua Guofeng had replaced Chairman Mao as Premier of the People's Republic of China. In 1977, the pound was worth $1.70. The average cost of a house in the UK was £12,805. And a pint of beer cost 38 pence. And the disco look was in. Saturday Night Fever, the movie, was a huge hit, and ruffles and sequins were all the rage. As were teddy boys and punk rockers. But they didn't get on. Hey, you don't come here to stir anything up? Huh? No, just the teddy boys always start on me and I steam to see, steam into them. What, what, what's the cause of the fight? Why? Because I don't like them. You just don't like them. <laughs> On Britain's roads, the Ford Fiesta was being billed as the new baby, and many grown-ups wanted one. British Airways started a regular supersonic Concorde service between London and New York. Champagne served at twice the speed of sound, New York hurtling nearer at the speed of a cannon shell, the sun losing the race to keep up with Concorde, the ultimate in conventional flying machine. We're travelling at 1,350 miles an hour, which is 10% faster than a rifle bullet. At Aintree, Red Rum won the Grand National for the third time. Already the cards were arriving from well-wishers. There were more, but Red Rum's eaten them. He liked peppermints too. Liverpool were top of the cop as they won both the European Cup and the English Football League Championship. 
In London, the world's first pocket television was launched. Would such a thing ever catch on? No other portable TV set in the world offers you this kind of mobility. It goes on sale here next month, priced about £200, including VAT. In Memphis, Tennessee, the king of rock and roll was found dead in his mansion. The scenes here in Memphis have been extraordinary. The size of the crowd far more reminiscent of people waiting for an Elvis Presley rock and roll concert than for people waiting for his funeral. In Britain in your year, health warnings were appearing on cigarette packets for the first time. Not everyone thought it was a good idea. Rothmans, a little while ago, introduced a tobacco substitute cigarette, and that went down like a lead balloon. So that's it from the vaults. For more details about Your Big Day videos and other special offers, go to yourbigday.tv. This is Martin Lewis. Enjoy your big day.